Hello and welcome, and today we'll be talking about the catastrophe theory. The catastrophe theory is a special branch of dynamical systems theory that deals with discontinuous processes. There are two kinds of processes within nature, continuous and discontinuous. Continuous processes are straightforward, as one variable in the process changes, a second variable changes at a constant rate. For example, when you compress a body, its density goes up. Another example, when you heat a gas, its volume increases. These processes are smooth and easy to predict. Discontinuous processes, on the other hand, are not. A steady change in one variable does not cause any change in a second variable, until it reaches a certain threshold value, beyond which there is a sudden change in the second variable. This sudden change in a discontinuous process is called a catastrophe. Consider a ball, free to roll under gravity in a double well container. The two variables here are the tilt of the container and the displacement of the ball. There is a catastrophe unfolding here. Not a big earthquake or something of that sort, but a simple mathematical one. Notice the ball at position 2. Even though the container is tilted, the ball is still balanced in the right well until at a degree, certain degree of tilt gravity wins the battle with friction and the ball rolls to the left well. Here, a very small change in tilt caused a very large or abrupt change in the displacement of the ball. This is an example of a catastrophe. An even easier example to understand is a pot, imagining a pot of water with 10 degrees Celsius. As you increase the temperature of the pot, the water starts heating up, but does not change its state until you reach 100 degrees Celsius, at which at this point the pot, water molecules abruptly change state to gas. Thus a very small change in temperature causes a very abrupt change in state, which is a catastrophe. As you can imagine, discontinuous processes and catastrophes are much harder to model and predict than continuous processes. Reen Thom created the catastrophe theory in the 1960s in an attempt to describe such processes. Catastrophe theory analyzes degenerate critical points of the potential function. Points where not just the first deriv derivative, but one or more higher derivatives of the potential function are also zero. These are called the germs of the catastrophe geometries. The values of variables at which a catastrophe occurs is called the catastrophe set. For the boiling water example, the catastrophe set only contains 100 degrees Celsius. But most discontinuous processes contain multiple variables. Thom collected data as he was developing the theory and observed that graphing the data gave rise to 3D shapes. He reasoned that even though the processes were very different from each other, they could be grouped depending on the number of variables involved. For example, all processes with four variables gave graphs that could be classified into seven basic graphs, meaning there were seven basic catastrophes for those processes. The theory then gained popularity as it was believed it could be used in any field of science. Catastrophe is extensively used in dynamical systems, mathematical and statistical modeling. It is used in the analysis of complex systems. Catastrophe theory is also extensively used in other disciplines in science. It was first used in mathematical biology in the 1970s. The theory was used extensively by E. Christopher Zeeman to study flight or fight responses in dogs. Catastrophe theory was also applied with varying degrees of success and failure to social topics, ranging from the stock market to prison riots to eating disorders. Despite the initial acceptance, it was soon discovered that the theory proved useless for processes with more than six variables, hence limiting its application in inexact sciences like sociology and biology. Despite this, the theory has proved very useful in exact sciences like physics and engineering and chemistry, and will continue to do so in time. Thank you so much for listening.